Hello everyone, welcome to Phosphor G to the Concawa Throne. Uh, following, we, we will be having another talk by Isaac Paya and John Duncan, titled An Open Source Geospatial Workflow to Map Diverse Landscapes in Pacific Island Countries. I think that we are fine to start now, so I will put your slides and go. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking um, today with my colleague, Ahi, who's based at the Ministry of Agriculture in the government of Tonga. And I'm a GIS researcher at the University of Western Australia. And we're going to be speaking about some work we've been doing through a project called Livelihoods and Landscapes, which is focusing on developing and using geospatial applications within the context of managing um, Pacific Island agricultural landscapes under sort of a changing climate and with a focus on sustainability. Um, so this work is very much an applied research project where we're developing workflows, apps and tools to map agricultural landscapes and to be able to collect quite detailed information about farm management um, and farm condition and with a heavy emphasis on using open source software throughout this um, this workflow so the focus is on being able to collect very detailed information in small scale agroforestry and mixed cropping systems that are prevalent across Pacific Island countries. And it's typical in these landscapes that the environmental resources and the various farms that are being operated that support livelihoods are distributed across landscapes in a mix of spatial patterns. And so having tools that allow you to capture this spatial detail and landscape use is really important to be able to guide effective landscape and farm management. So a bit a quick overview for some of the context of this work. The key goal here is for the data collection workflows that we're, we're using and developing to enhance existing stakeholder activities and align with their requirements. And in particular, this is the work of the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Forests in Tonga. And we've been using an agile and iterative software development process to design the workflow and to sort of align technical and operational requirements of it. Um, and the aim of this method is to develop data collection and analysis tools that best fit the sort of geographic context where they're deployed but also um, meet the needs of users. So I'm just going to hand over to my colleague Ahi now, who's going to introduce Tonga's agricultural setting, where most of this work has taken place. Okay, thank you, John. Um, firstly, Malo Lele, and to those of you who haven't um, heard of Tonga, is one of the smallest islands located in the South Pacific. Now, in Tonga, our work was um, based in one of the island groups called Vava'u. And traditional diet is consisted mostly of root crops such as yam, taro, kumara, etc. So, major economic activity in Tonga is farming and fishing. Also, our major export is um, root crops. Our agricultural crops are more of um, semi subsistent and the farm management is not the same as um, other regions. And there, where we, as in the Ministry of Agriculture, are able to get the data to be able to get information from the plantation and to yield the output to the communities. And to the next slide. In our old method um, for any service in the ministry, it's more unreliable and based on estimation. They mainly provide hard copy paper, but when mobile GIS was introduced to us, 
it really helps the ministry gain more advance of showing in a reliable and more accurate data, which we can store and retrieve from our database collection. I'm just going to take um, two examples from this. This was the survey that we just done last year and later this year, which is the Vanilla survey. Vanilla um, is an important commercial crop in Laval. The purpose of the survey was to map uh, the extent of vanilla plantation, which we obtained estimates of the number of vanilla plants, area under cultivation, which we use this um, using the mobile GIS. And second example is the land equalization survey. This was a government funded project for farmers and MEF provides food fuel for farmers. And we check the location where the farmers plow, um, plow their land. This data is important for the government to see the extent of farming that has been done in the short period of time. Um, yeah, next slide, John. So I'm just going to quickly bring it back to the technical side of this work and talk about how we went about designing um, the data collection and farm mapping workflows that have been used in Tonga. And we've used a, a collaborative software development methodology through this process called ICT4D, which stands for Information and Communications Technology for Development. And so right at the start of this project, um, we conducted a needs assessment. And this really consisted of um, lots of focus groups and interviews, bringing together GIS folk, um, geospatial developers, and landscape users, uh, such as farmers, private commercial enterprises, government officials. And the goal was to identify unmet needs for geospatial data and GIS applications um, within the context of managing landscapes in, in Pacific Island countries, and in particular in Tonga. And from this information, we identified the crop type maps, um, crop survey tools and applications, and land cover and land use data and classifiers were high priority needs that were unmet and were also feasible to develop within the project constraints and the skill sets of the people working on the project. So having identified the needs, we set out a series of requirements analysis tasks to pin down the functional and non-functional requirements of a software system that could be deployed in, in these agricultural landscapes and would, would also um, contribute to meeting the unmet needs that we'd identified and prioritized. And this requirements analysis was an iterative process that combined um, focus groups of use case modeling and discussing various user narratives and um, user stories. And there's an example of um, one of those on the right hand side of these slides here. And these these are still quite broad, but helped us sort of identify um, what what activities were going on in terms of using data and collecting data within the landscapes to avoid duplication and to identify activities that we can um, possibly enhance through the use of um, geospatial data collection or um, from actually using geospatial data to inform these activities. And then from that, we set about building a range of prototype apps and then testing these out on farms and in sort of various mock data analysis tasks. And there's an example of one of these apps here, just looking at exploring forest cover data. And then this process was very iterative. So we refined it and repeated it at various stages. Um, and so sort of coming up to the present in terms of sort of developing these sets of tools and a workflow for mapping farms. Once we'd settled on the range of functional and non-functional requirements um, to put together a system to implement farm mapping in Tonga's agricultural, agricultural and agroforestry systems um, and also fits within the needs of the Ministry of Agriculture's data collection tasks, um, 
we, we came up with something that looks like what's on this slide here. And this is very much a high level overview of the tools and the software that comprise the farm mapping workflow that we've been using. And it's a mix of applications that already exist, like QField, um, that we've identified worked well in, in this context through some field testing. And then when there wasn't applications off the shelf that met our needs, um, we've developed software to meet these specific tasks. So this, this workflow starts with using QField um, with data collectors out in the field mapping farms. And then there's a fast API app that handles data syncing, quality checking, and automates the processing of key variables and data layers. And this app also manages our data storage in Google Cloud. And then finally, we've got um, a range of dashboards and browser-based GIS and visualization tools that can be used for quick analysis of the data that's stored in the cloud and can be fed into reporting and decision-making. So I'm going to hand back to Ahi, who's going to talk about some of the work that she's been doing using QField. Thank you, John, but um, continue on. So for us here in Tongan, and when we're working um, with the survey and using the mobile GIS, which is QField, so basically my team managed to collect the data by, um, we have to plot every edge in the plantation in order to like um, get the layout and the, of the plot and save it. And when you save it, it automatically, the form is in there. So we just have to like insert the, the what are the varieties of every crops and all of the information in, in the particular plots, which will be saved in the, um, in the forms in key field. And next slide. The fact that this app is new to us and, and it's also useful. Vanilla is highly provided. Yeah, these two examples of, um, this is the output of our data, of the result of our data that we, we get from using this um, um, technology. The fact that it is very new to us and it's useful. And it's also um, print out more accurate data for us to like present it to the communities and also to the government for uh, creating our reports in the ministry. Um, we can find out how many vanilla plantation are managed, how many vanilla are newly planted. We estimate the volume of vanilla for harvesting. Like for example, this is an example that we're using um, by field. And also the crop survey. And so basically our work is survey every year. Once a year that we do a survey on the vanilla and we survey on the crop survey, which is the overall of the crops here in Tonga. And this survey, which our old method is um, based on estimation. And we are moving now to using key field, which is um, very useful. We get to like estimate the, the layer of the mapping like for example, in there we we don't we just have to like identify the location in it, not like before we just have to like guess what are the what is the text development for this um, layer and this, but in key field we automatic um declare it with the locations and all of that, and is it also important for us to have the data for our database, especially when um cyclone comes so we can access the extent of the remaining crops are planning for. Okay, back to you, John. Thank, thanks, Ahi. Um, so I guess uh, with the um, Q fields, you, it supports a range of different field mapping tasks as well. So there's the example of the vanilla plantation survey you can see on the left, which is a very focused um, field data collection task targeting one one crop and a small number of commercial plantations and then at the same time it um, allows for this kind of widespread data collection where across an, an island group or several island groups you can create a sort of wall-to-wall -wall map of several thousand farms um, and so I'm going to speak a little bit about what happens 
after all that data is being collected in the field. And we often found there were situations where you'd have several data collectors and they'd have their data on their mobile devices, so tablets and phones, and they'd often be out collecting new data on multiple days um, throughout the duration of a project or for a particular um, data collection task. So there's a need to find a way to keep a record of each completed survey and also to be able to sync together multiple surveys from different data collectors and devices and perform a suite of data quality checks before the data is used by um, the Ministry of Agriculture to, to make decisions. So to support this kind of data processing, data management, we've developed a FAST API application. So it's um, written in Python, which is what FAST API uses. And that sits on top of um, Google Cloud Storage. And it provides a web form for data collectors to submit their completed surveys and then download clean forms to their devices. This operates in a slightly different mode to um, sort of two-way syncing where you have multiple data collectors all pushing and pulling from the same um, sort of GIS projects and database in the cloud. Um, and they will kind of keep the same copy of the data on their devices that's um, synced up to a central copy. The goal with uh, this app was to operate in a kind of census mode and minimize the amount of data that was kept on devices and for data collectors to use a clean project and form for each survey that was undertaken. So for really for each farm that was mapped, you start with a clean project and clean form. Um, the app manages um, records of each submission um, and so it automates the data syncing and does some quality checking. And it also automates the computation of derived variables and key, key spatial layers. So it publishes the latest cut of the survey data, which can be accessed via the Ministry of Agriculture's website on the dashboard. And that's what this image on the right is showing. It's just showing the latest cut of the crop survey data for the island of Vival and showing you the number of the carver crop plants in each field. It also um, provides some data layers that allow for a high resolution and detailed characterization of the agroforestry systems as well. So it, you can zoom in on each field uh, on an island and look at what mix of crops are grown in that field, what area within the field is allocated to each crop, and then how many uh, plants of each crop there are in that field. And then it also provides an API for data cleaning. So admin users can go in and tidy up and clean up data that's coming in from the field. So the final part of our workflow and the apps we've been developing is a suite of dashboard tools using our Shiny um, leaflet and data tables and a few other components. And the goal here was to put together a set of easy to use tools that allows non GIS experts to access the data that's being collected in the field and combine this field data with other geospatial layers. So census layers, um, administrative boundaries, um, other key data layers that are being used within the ministry and perform a suite of GIS operations within a web browser. So it has a four main functionalities, this dashboard app. The first is a set an admin mode which you can sort of see a screen grab of in the top right, which allows um, a user to edit geometries and the attribute data associated with each geometry, and then sync these changes back to the Google Cloud storage. And then tools for analyzing tabular data, so spatial and non-spatial joins, creating summary tables, and possibly creating new columns and, um, and layers with custom functions. And then some tools to style your own web map and interrogate the attributes of features. So you can go in and get um, different views of agroforestry systems uh, to suit the particular sort of problem that you're focusing on. And then similarly, some chart building tools, as you can see in the bottom of uh, the bottom image there. And the primary focus of this app was to 
make the GIS analysis and visualization as easy as possible and to get the detailed insights um, out of the data being collected using QField and into sort of reporting, decision making and landscape monitoring context within the ministry. I spend a second or two providing a couple of examples of some of the analysis and insights that's being gleaned from these tools. So as we said, we've been able to generate some spatially detailed view so sort of cropping systems and their arrangement across the landscape. So looking at what mix of crops are in what fields and then using this data as a precursor to lots of interesting questions around sustainability, nutritional diversity and land cover changes. Um, the, this data also provides quite an accurate and detailed baseline that can be used to track changes through time. So even in um, the time frame that we've been collecting data, we've seen rapid shifts in land allocated to carbon cultivation in the past five years in some villages. And this is quite consequential for um, things such as reducing crop diversity and reducing the number of food crops in the ground as carbon is not actually a food crop. And so this has implications for food security and food supply chains, and then also has environmental implications as carbon is a destructive crop um, in terms of how it's harvested, where you pull the whole plant out of the ground, exposing the topsoil to erosion as you're really after the roots. And there's a picture of a carver plant uh, in the center of the screen there that you, you'd be pulling out the ground completely when you're harvesting. And then the, the map on the left shows fields that have been sort of newly converted to carver cropping systems in the, in the last couple of years in that village on Babao. And then also the, the data that's being collected and some of the software tools has relevance to sort of um, commercial agriculture as well. So at a point in time, the Ministry of Agriculture can um, look on a web map uh, to identify the, the number of plants of key commercial crops, such as pineapples or um, vanilla and watermelons, and identify where those crops are planted within the landscape. Okay, so to finish quickly, I'm going to pass back to Ahi, who's going to talk about some work that she's been doing taking this data um, and information and discussing it with farmers. Well, just a short um, update. The farmers are happy to know that they can check their actual boundaries of the land using this technology. From our survey, we found out um, that some of the farmers are using the neighbor's land to the lack of um, physical boundary or marker. So it's um, they are happy to know where the other plantation and how much it got of crops um, out there. So thank you. John, back to you. Um, so that that's it from us. And just like to say thank you to everyone who's um, listening and also to say thanks to ACIA who funded this research and the numerous people um, along the way who've contributed their time and, and effort in helping us develop these tools and contributed to the data collection campaigns. And so, I do. So, I hear. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, it was amazing and very interesting. Uh, now we have some time for questions, but it seems like we don't have any. So, I don't know, maybe you want to add something to the talk? Um, or we can finish now if you if you like. I think um, I, I covered everything that I, I'd wanted to say. Um, I would say that for all of the uh, software applications that we put together, they're all published openly on GitHub, and the links to the repo on our slides. So there's there's lots of documentation in there. Um, and tutorials on how to use these tools as well. So if anyone was interested in um, following up or, or using any of these applications, then um, that would be a good place to head. All right. Uh, where they can contact you in case they are interested? Oh, pardon, sorry? Where can they contact you in case they are interested or they want to, well, they can get into the repositories, of course. Right. 
Um, yeah, like I think the the best place to contact me would be so my you can get my contact details from the university profile. So if you Google me at the University of Western Australia, that'd be a good place to go. Or or head to the GitHub repos and leave a comment there. We um, sort of actively manage them. All right, perfect. Well, thank you, John Ahi, for your talk, and we will be seeing you around in Infos4G. See yeah, you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.